There continues to be controversy about the safety of high fructose corn syrup. Of course, the Corn Refiners Association and the American Medical Association both say that it's safe and the same as table sugar. But scientific research doesn't agree, and studies are showing that high fructose corn syrup and sugar are causing serious liver disease in 10% of our teenagers. So is there a difference between table sugar and high fructose corn syrup, and what about fructose and glucose? Well, you really nailed that, Vicki, and it's important to, to, to know these differences because it gets confusing. Table sugar is sucrose, and it's made of fructose and glucose, okay? Two simple sugars. And high fructose corn syrup is made of the same thing, of 50% uh, glucose and 50% fructose. So it sounds like it's the so same. So it sounds it's the same, but there are some subtle differences. One is, is there's slightly more fructose in high fructose corn syrup, maybe as much as 55% instead of 50%. And the sugars, the fructose and the glucose, are joined together so that they form one compound. So that when we have that in our system, it has to be broken down into the simple sugars before it's absorbed. Now, could that cause differences? And that's, that, that debate is apparently still open. Although most of the mainstream people who are in this, in this particular scientific field feel that they're probably the same. Well, I think the studies have shown that fructose, for one thing, can increase your appetite. Well, fructose and glucose are different. We didn't get to that, that place yet, and it's really, you're right, that's the most important differential we have to look at. Fructose is something that is toxic to the body and actually works much the same metabolically as alcohol does, as booze, as ethanol. It's hard to believe that that's the same, but it's been well studied and the pathways of the way the liver handles, handles alcohol and the way it handles fructose is about the same. So if you take your children out to dinner to a restaurant and you have a beer and they have a soft drink, it's you're both doing the same amount of damage to your liver. It's the same amount. One can of one is, e is equivalent to one can of the other. So when we consume either alcohol or fructose, it goes to the liver, and in the case of fructose, it's the only place it can be metabolized, as opposed to glucose, which is metabolized in, in the liver in a small amount, but also in many other tissues of the body, like the muscles and the brain and red cells. So when we take in glucose, it doesn't cause the same problems as fructose does because fructose is metabolized into the free fatty acids, those fats that accumulate in the liver and cause inflammation. It's what causes what we call dyslipidemia or a abnormal kind of accumulation of fat in the liver that causes this fatty liver that's now affecting 10% of our teenagers. So it's a big deal when we get fat in our liver because that's the inflammation that leads to the fatty liver and eventually to real cirrhosis, just like we get when we overdrink alcohol. Well, you we were talking about the dyslipidemia in the liver. Doesn't it also cause high triglycerides in our bloodstream? Yes, well, that's what it is, actually. Dyslipidemia means that there is too much in the way of triglycerides. And then, on, on the other hand, doesn't it do affect our insulin sensitivity somehow? It does a lot of other things. So when we have too much triglycerides in our liver and it causes liver disease, it also affects, like Vicki was saying, insulin sensitivity, meaning it makes the insulin in our body not work so well and it puts us at risk for developing heart attacks and strokes and, and uh, high blood pressure and, and, diabetes. and diabetes and converting the sugar, the fructose, into fat, which is stored in the fat cells and then lock there because it blocks the enzyme that's supposed to be able to take it out of the fat cell to metabolize. So it's a nasty combination. And also doesn't it increase obesity three times more than glucose does? For sure it does. In fact, one of the things it does is it affects a, a hormone called leptin. Leptin now is a hormone that's made by our fat cells that when we eat, the fat cells secrete leptin and it goes to the brain and it turns it off and says you're full. But when you take in uh, fructose, it doesn't do that. It doesn't cause any, any effect on the brain to turn it off at all. And it causes problems with excessive consumption, which leads to obesity. So when we have leptin resistance and we have insulin resistance, we got a real problem in our hands. And that's why we're seeing this epidemic of a lot of the things we're talking about, of obesity, type 2 diabetes, heart attacks, strokes, uh, even the cancers and, and things like that. Also, doesn't the fructose, when it damages the liver, affect the amount of uric acid and lead to gout? 
It does. There's a way that uh, it's complex biochemistry, but take it as this, that when fructose goes to the liver and it's metabolized, there is a pathway that leads to the formation of too much uric acid. And uric acid is the cause when it's in high concentrations of gout, that gouty arthritis and all of its complications. Well, some of the other things, too, is that this non-alcoholic fatty liver disease can also lead to hepatitis and cirrhosis and cancer. Yeah, that's right. So it's, it's not infectious hepatitis. It's a chemical hepatitis that's caused by the fat deposition of those triglycerides that are, that are stored in the, in the liver that cause inflammation, the fatty liver and cirrhosis. Now, also, I think it would be helpful to just briefly go over some of the functions of the liver so that people know that why they don't want to damage their liver. Yeah, well, it, I mean, it's our major organ for detoxification, and if we can't detoxify, then we're in trouble. That's when we start to get sick. It, doesn't it also even help to regulate our blood sugar and our cholesterol it and, does, yes. and metabolize hormones and, and vitamin, vitamin A storage? A. It does so many things. And that, burn fat. It That's burns a, fat, too. So we're looking at, at lots of functions of the liver that are important to maintain. And when we're taking in fructose or alcohol, we're compromising things. And it's very difficult to avoid high fructose corn syrup and sugar because it's hidden in a lot of things. I mean, we already know that it's in cakes and, and candies and things like that. But what about ca um, cereal and meats and bread? And, yeah, and lots of and sauces that we have are loaded with it because it's cheap. And most of the processed foods and the dressings too, salad dressings and all these sauces. You should read the labels of what you're consuming and in general that's why we say if it's got a label on it, it's got a long list of ingredients, don't buy it because it's probably not food, it's probably a food product and the things that are in food products very often are things that are not healthy for us. And you know things that say low fat are usually high in sugar and the average American eats about 150 pounds of it a year, and that includes uh, high fructose corn syrup and, and the table sugar. Right. So the FDA says that uh, fructose is, is safe, and they subsidize the corn industry for the high fructose corn syrup. Well, that Maybe that's a little political. <laughs> well, there's no question about that because science is clear. There's a big difference between glucose and fructose. About that, you can rest assured. Nobody's arguing about that. But we're still not taking the precautions that we need to clean up our food to make sure that we're not putting all this fructose out there. And we shouldn't be having sugar in large amounts either because you've got to keep in mind that sugar, table sugar, and high fructose corn syrup aren't that different. And the small differences that there are between them may have something to do with why we're seeing this epidemic. And of neither obesity. one of them are healthy. No, so we want to stay clear of it. If we do, we'll be healthier, and so will our kids.